hey booktube let's wrap up some romance i'm jen and i talk about audiobooks and i have not wrapped up anything for quite a while now so i thought i would take some time and tell you about some of the books i've been reading and uh, these books are all romance, adult romance, and they're all by Kristen Higgins, who has shot to the top of my list of absolute favorite romance authors. She has a particular style that I really enjoy, and I think a lot of people would say that she crowds her plots with peripheral characters and the conflicts going on with those characters, that kind of thing. I don't think so. I think it just makes it all the better. I, uh, I'm always impressed with her main characters who are generally women in their late 20s, early 30s, and they're successful and they tend to be glass half full people and they always have a dog. I'm not sure why that is. So let me just tell you about some of these. I, before I do that though, let me also tell you that I don't hand out five-star ratings very easily and several of these are five-star books for me. So yeah, let me tell you about them. The first one is Too Good to Be True and on audio this is narrated by Exie Sands. This is all about Grace and Grace is engaged to Andrew until Andrew breaks things off and falls for her sister. Now her sister is the baby that her parents brought home on her fourth birthday. So she has just, you know, loved her sister, you know, more than anything for all these years. And same with Natalie. Natalie loves Grace. And so, you know, uh, she and Aunt, uh, Natalie and Andrew are trying to walk on eggshells around Grace because they don't want her to hurt. Grace is, so she's moving on from that. And she had, her dog is named Angus. She calls him Angus McFangus. And he's a little kind of for lack of a better term, a rat dog, most annoying dog. I would have gotten rid of him. So uh, the thing about Grace is that one of the ways that she copes is that she makes up imaginary boyfriends. And they're mainly so that she can deal with the situation better. And in, you know, in the main case of what's going on in her life right now, she does this so her family will just get off her back and stop, you know, thinking that she's, oh, poor Grace. So she does that. Uh, and she's been doing it since elementary school. So it, it's kind of a cute thing, you know, the way she has to kind of think on her feet about this uh, imaginary boyfriend. There is a lot of slapstick comedy in this book, and I thought it was going to get to be too much. But about the time I thought that, it was enough. You know, it stopped happening. So I loved that. I loved the way this was all about moving on from a situation that has hurt you and from, um, you know, letting relationships evolve into what they need to be and not judging people by their appearance and also not judging them for um, maybe when you don't know everything about them, you need to get to know them before you make a judgment about their character or about their personality. The main thing I liked about this book was that Grace, being a glass half full kind of person, get, got pushed by everyone around her and bad things kept happening to her and she kept having to cope. And, you know, it became apparent that this book really was trying to address the idea of how much is too much. I mean, how much do you take from those people around you that love you and care about you before you just have to say, okay, look, no more. You know, I, I can't have you guys behaving this way and treating me this way and having these things happen. So I loved this book. It just had so many great things in it. Uh, the way that the plot, in, you know, went along and unraveled. It was just wonderful. And I ended up giving that one four stars. Fools Rush In is a standalone, as was Too Good to Be True, and also narrated by Exy Sands. And this was delightful. This is all about Millie. And Millie was a fat girl in high school. And she was always in love with Joe Carpenter. And so she left you know, after high school, she went away to college and she became a doctor and she lost some weight and comes back a successful, confident woman. 
and she decides she's going to make it her mission to get Joe Carpenter and she's going to get him to fall for her. Well, she has this list of things she has to accomplish. I have to lose weight. So she starts running. I have to get a dog because he volunteers sometimes at the um, Humane Society. She needs to volunteer at the senior center because Joe is a carpenter and he's working on a renovation there at the senior center. So it'll enable her to see him more often. Sam Nickerson is her ex-brother-in-law. Her sister Trish was married to Sam for 17 years and Sam and Trish have a son named Danny who is about to graduate high school and go off to college. And, uh, you know, Millie loves Danny. She just loves him. And she thinks that Sam just, you know, Trish done him wrong. And her sister's kind of out of the picture. And so she and Sam and Danny are all like friends that they go to movies and they watch videos and, you know, they play games, they go do stuff. So Millie essentially is trying to take care of Sam and Danny. Some of the things in this book have to do with uh, taboo relationships. What exactly is that? And when is it taboo and when is it not? When is it okay? When can you expect for people to get over themselves and accept a relationship when uh, they maybe don't because of where they're coming from? It's about sibling rivalry. And th that's not pretty in this book. I mean, they're not nice to each other and it's fault on both sides. So it's very realistic in that way. And the way this one unfolds is just so sweet, but it's also kind of gritty. There are uh, moments where, you know, it's not a, you know, it's not a beautiful, happy ending. And you question, you know, it, there is a happy ending, but you wonder whether or not you're really going to get there. And if you do, if everybody's going to be happy and not just the protagonist. So I love that one. I thought it just dealt with these issues so well. And, you, you know, there it's the kind of thing where you're able to see yourself, if you have those issues, you can see yourself so clearly in the characters. So I ended up giving that one five stars. My favorite series that I've read of Kristen Higgins is the Blue Heron series. And I talked about books one and two last fall. And so since then I've read books three, four, and five, and I'm caught up to the series. And this series is set in a small New England town that's a resort town and it has a winery and a restaurant and, Things mainly revolve around those two uh, locations. And these are all narrated on audio by Amy Rubinate. And I don't care for Amy Rubinate as a narrator. So I read them as ebooks. And uh, I don't think there are more books in the series. I think uh, we're waiting on the next one. So let me tell you about books three, four, and five. Book three is Waiting on You. And I loved this book so much. This is a book I would go back and read again. It was really amazing. It really, really was. It's all about Colleen, who is part owner with her twin brother of the restaurant. Basically, it's the bar where everybody goes and the food is incredible because Colleen's brother, twin brother Connor, is an amazing chef. Colleen is not attached romantically to anyone, but she's meddling in everybody's life. She's matching people up right and left, and it's working very well. Well, back in high school, she was involved with a guy named Lucas, and Lucas had a bad home life. He uh, lost his mom, his dad got into some trouble and ended up going to prison, and he was sent to live with his aunt and uncle, and his aunt didn't want him there and basically abused him. And while they were, you know, in their freshman year of college, he and Colleen, they broke up over something that happened. And Colleen really has never gotten over it. So Lucas now is back in town because his uncle is in ill health and he has to take care of things. And so it is the story of how they um, repair that relationship and the kinds of things that they have to go through to do that. So this book deals a lot with family and whose family? And uh, can you trust someone who has broken your heart? And I don't mean the protagonists. There are other things going on in this book where trust has been broken, people have felt betrayed, and how do you repair those relationships? How do you get back 
or maybe move forward in a positive way from the damage that's been done in the relationship. It just dealt with that so well. It, it wasn't all about Colleen and Lucas. It was about some peripheral people, uh, characters in the story. And all of this is uh, kind of couched in Colleen's humor. She has a very dry wit and she's always throwing out one-liners and she's sarcastic and she doesn't want anything to do with Lucas because this is the boy that broke her heart. And so she's got all these one-liners. The book is really funny, but it's also really poignant. And I was really surprised at the way it dealt with, you know, like I say, family and death and betrayal and moving on and, you know, who your family is and the way that they embrace you and who you can rely on no matter what. And uh, the people in your life around you that will tell you the truth. I just loved it. I really did. And I gave that one five stars. In Your Dreams is book four in the Blue Heron series, and it's all about Emma Lai. And she was engaged to a guy who was fat. And he was a great guy, but he began to lose weight, and he kind of fell for his trainer. And so now they're getting married, and he has invited Emmeline to come to the wedding. And she feels like, I'm not going to let this get me. I'm going to go to this wedding. But she doesn't have a date. So Jack is the guy that everyone drools over and he is part of the family that owns the winery. And you know, everybody is saying, why don't you ask Jack? Ask Jack, he'll go with you. And she doesn't want to ask Jack, but she ends up, uh, there's a conversation going on as Jack walks into the room and he goes, what? And the person who is talking to Emmeline says, she needs a date for this wedding. And he goes, okay, well, I'll go. Well, they have to fly to the wedding and it's the story of how they get together and how that whole thing is handled. Now, Jack has his own situation going on. Uh, uh, he's ready to get out of town because of something that happened and he was previously married and so he has an ex-wife that wants him back. So we've got all of these things going on and while I really liked this book, I don't think it had the emotional weight that some of the other books that I read had. Now, had I not read any of Kristen Higgins' other books, I might say this was fantastic. Actually, I probably would. It was fantastic. It just wasn't as amazing as some of her other books. Um, the themes were good. You know, it was one of those, again, how much is too much and where, where do you draw the line? And I, I liked it a lot, so I gave that one four stars. In Anything For You, which is book five, Connor, who is the twin sister of Colleen from book three, he is obviously part owner of the, the bar and grill, and he's the chef. And Colleen is his twin sister, and they have this twin thing going on where they always know, you know, what the other one is thinking. And so he has been secretly dating Jessica for, I don't know, 10 years. And she was a waitress for a lot of years, and she had a very bad home situation. Her mother was an alcoholic, and her brother, who is much younger, like eight to ten years younger, has fetal alcohol syndrome. So he, you know, he's disabled. So she's been taking care of him her whole life. Does not resent it at all. Dad left, just bailed on them. And so she basically focuses in on her brother and doesn't really let anything else in because she has to do that. That has to be her focus. Well, now she uh, started working at a winery. She went to night school, got her master's degree in business, and now she is an event planner. And she's really good at her job and very well liked. And she's had this secret thing going on with Connor. Well, Connor loves her. Connor proposes to her in the very first few pages of the book. And she goes, no, I'm not going to marry you. Get up here. You know, get off your knees. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to marry you. And he is like, okay, look, I've had it. Because he's asked her several times. I'm not going to ask again. So this becomes all about Connor and how patient is he going to be? And how long do you wait when someone keeps telling you no and how do you get past the i feel in my heart like this is the right thing but i keep getting told no like how 
how hard you have to work to be able to convince the other person yet yeah, this is the right thing to do so it's about that and you know there are a lot of other issues going on obviously with fetal alcohol syndrome and alcoholism in general and forgiveness and uh, abandonment and uh, trust and betrayal and you know how you deal with that with family and enough else going on in the book that by the end of the book I was so moved I was so emotionally moved and I ended up giving that one five stars too I really can't wait for the next one in that series I am thrilled because I don't think I'm gonna run out of Kristen Higgins books anytime soon and that makes me really happy I will say this I read two back to back and I knew that I needed a break because the the kind of characters and the way that the plot will unfold is similar enough book to book that if you don't break it up you're going to get tired of it really quickly so I haven't so let me know if you've read any of these books I would love to talk about romance and you know are you familiar with Kristen Higgins and do you have a favorite book of hers because I want to know what it is so I can read it or maybe I've read it already so let's talk about all that in comments and that's it for now from me I will see you next time thanks for watching mm -hmm.